Well, hey there, everybody. It's Bo here. Uh, it is. Uh, it has been a while since I talked to you in the formal Hero Hero Go Show chair. Um, this is a bit of a warning shot across the bow to let you know there is a brand spanking new show uh, coming shortly. Um, I am putting that together now, uh, and and I hope to have that out sometime next week. So, in the meantime, though. Um, I wanted to not only let you know that a new episode is coming and that uh, you don't have to delete <laughs> this feed from your podcast catcher. Uh, we, we really are going to do shit. Also, because I wanted to talk about Peninsula in a more direct way. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Train to Busan presents Peninsula from, uh, from this year, the year of our Lord 2020. Um... It is a follow-up to Train to Busan. It does not involve the same characters at all. It is, as the title suggests, the Train to Busan Presents uh, sort of lean into the title. I think suggests that the idea is that they would like to do a number of these movies that are kind of connected only in setting. Uh, in that you are talking about a Korea that is, uh, it is very much um, consumed by this zombie plague. So, uh, if you don't want spoilers at all, I'm not going to go into depth about the story. I'm going to try to speak very generally of that. But if you don't want to know nothing from nothing, um, I will give you the quick review up front, which is, should you watch it? Eh, maybe. It's it's good, but... Uh, the biggest problem it has is its effects, which are so distracting that it genuinely detracts from the quality of the film. Uh, so that's the short version. Let's get into it a little bit in more detail. Um, th so this takes place uh, about five years after uh, the events of Train to Busan. Um, all of the Korean Peninsula uh, is 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 infected. It has been sealed off, and uh, nobody goes in. It's just it, it is uh, the an abandon all hope ye who enter here kind of place. And the world has just agreed. Like at some point, we may have to nuke this shit, but right now we've got it contained, and we're just gonna let these things die out, and then we're gonna go back in. And so the hero of our film uh, is part of a group that is hired to go into Busan uh, or to go into South Korea and uh, basically retrieve a truck with a bunch of money in it. Um, the idea is like, hey, nobody's watching South Korea anymore because of all the zombies and whatnot. So if we can very quickly and quietly get in there, avoid detection by the zombies as well as anyone who may remain, grab this truck and then bring it to this ship, we could very easily make ourselves all millionaires with very little effort. Unfortunately, the first team has gone missing, so this is the second team that is going in. Um, and of course, you know, things go sideways. And what we discover is that there are still human survivors within the peninsula um, who live among these zombies. Uh, one group is a family struggling to stay alive. The other group is more of a uh, Mad Max style. I'll, I'll tell you what it is. What this movie reminds me of more than anything is Land of the Dead. Um, I think it is maybe better than Land of the Dead. But in terms of the society that kind of exists in this small pocket, it's not quite that big. It's not a Fiddler's Green the way that uh, Land of the Dead was. But it's that kind of raw, like, hey, we're going to use some of these zombies for sport. It's a very, uh, like, a feudal kind of group with uh, a leader who is maybe not... Um, used to combat is maybe more of a pencil pusher kind of leader in a scenario where uh, that is less called for. Um, and and so there are some similarities, some striking similarities. Um, so one thing that, that Train to Busan, I, I think, was known for was its characters. 
Um, you know, some of the, the greatest moments in that film have nothing to do with zombies or murder or mayhem or none of that. Uh, it's just good old fashioned, you know, characters doing character stuff. And uh, there is enough of that in Peninsula to get bought. It, it's not, it doesn't have quite the same magic. It doesn't have that character. Uh, I can't think of the character's name now, but the, uh, the guy who was sort of the muscle lunkhead who turned out to have a heart of gold and was just constantly trying to protect his pregnant wife you know that kind of lovable character there is sort of an analog to him in the movie but it's not quite there um so it's you know all that stuff is a little bit of a disappointment um it's you know it suffers from that it's just not as good as train to busan it's it's okay but it's not as good and then you you pile onto all of that sensation that that sort of sinking sensation that yeah this is okay it's it, like all of this is passable and it would have been a fine follow up if it weren't for the over reliance on digital effects in particular uh, one of the characters which is actually quite fun in concept one of the the young daughters in this family. Uh, that our, our hero finds is a great driver, like baby driver level great driver where she can whip this SUV she's in around in such a way to just murder zombies left and right. That sounds awesome, and it would be if the all the effects did not look like last generation PlayStation. Um, it, it just all looks kind of cheap. And, and it drains the movie. Like, there's there are some shots and some moments where you're like, that looks great. That's Train of Busan. That's the stuff I remember. And then there are some shots that look so, so digital that you just can't invest anything in it because none of it's real. None of it looks real. It looks like a video game. And not not a great video game. Not, not the good, not, not the naughty dog shit. You know, <laughs> that that makes you think video games are real. Um, it is it's really frustrating uh, as someone as someone who loves both zombie movies and video games that they, they didn't even get good video game graphics. Um, yeah, it that is the biggest disappointment of Peninsula. You know, I think it, it, it was fun to watch still. I do enjoy the movie on a pure entertainment level because uh, Sang Ho Yun, the director of this and, and co-writer is like, he's good at his job. Like there, there's fun stuff there. Like visually it's really interesting. It's just that the digital effects can't match his vision. And so instead of accurately portraying what the direct, the director has in his head, what shows up on screen is the you know B tier version of it, and I don't you know I don't know whose fault that is. I don't know who's to blame. Is it the effects house? It is is it Sing Ho Yun for relying on effects this greatly so that it it undercut his film so much? Um, but yeah, it, like that those scenes are enough to shake me out of the movie. That every time there was a big action sequence. It fell flat, and then the the fallout of that is for the next couple of scenes. I'm like, okay, okay, let me get back into this now, and it it's really, really frustrating. Um, and maybe that's at the end of the day, that's my ultimate review of Peninsula is that it's really, really frustrating. There's such a good movie to be had here, and it just feels like it's not quite the quality of Train to Busan. And then when you you pile on the the sometimes uh, unfortunate effects work, it becomes a movie that is difficult to recommend. Um, if you are a it, like, if you're curious, like this movie's not gonna do you wrong in terms of just being at least passable entertainment. It's at least that good, but it's not gonna do much more than that. And that's the real heartbreak: is that Train to Busan is one of those movies that make the case for zombie films that like you can still do a really good zombie film. Uh, Peninsula feels like a pretty good zombie film. And, and that's grading on a curve that is, uh, it, it hurts to use. So that is train to Busan presents Peninsula for here, here go show. 
Uh, it's it's a real bummer, folks. I, I wish that had been better. Um, but keep uh, keep an ear out here. Not only is there going to be um, a bigger uh, a bigger show coming, that is, it's already recorded. I just got to edit it all together and, and do some polish. Uh, and once that is done, that will be out. Um, and I and I'm hoping to do some more of these of like kind of one offs where we're not doing deep dives, uh, and maybe it's just me talking at you. If that is uh, something you would be interested in hearing uh, more of, by all means, drop me a line. And you can do so at bo, B-O, at legionpodcasts.com uh, at any old time and uh, and let me know. Also, what the name of these little reviews should be. I'm, I was trying to think of a name for like a little short review episode for Hero Hero Go Show. I haven't come up with a good one yet, so feel free to uh, drop me a line. Uh, anyway, that's it. Have a have a great day, folks. Uh, thanks as always for listening to Hero Hero Go Show, and uh, and more coming soon. So talk to you then. Bye.